Fossil fuels such as oil, gas and coal contain carbon dioxide or CO2 that has been locked away in the ground for thousands of years. When we burn these fuels, we release the stored carbon dioxide into the air. This is one of the greenhouse gases that is causing our planet to heat up. John, can you tell us what is science telling us about climate change at the moment? What we know for sure is that human actions in particularly over the last 50, 60 years have fundamentally changed the chemistry of the atmosphere. And we know this from the oceans to the top of the stratosphere, human actions and, and particularly human emissions have wrought fundamental changes in the chemistry of the world. And this is playing itself out in all kinds of ways. For example, we know that the key controlling gas in our atmosphere is carbon dioxide. And we know that from the 1950s to today, we've got almost 40% more CO2 in the atmosphere. We have the highest level of atmospheric CO2 now that we've had on Earth in three million years. So the, the, the stable conditions known as the Holocene that have really pre predominated on Earth since the end of the last ice age, those conditions are coming to an end right now because human interference, if you like, in the climate system has moved us outside of the stable atmospheric conditions upon which all our civilizations, all our cities, all our wealth has been built and our agriculture systems. All of these have been built and have thrived on a stable climatic system. That system is rapidly coming to an end. Carbon Impact, a project based at Trinity College Dublin, is participating in Science Foundation Ireland's Zero Emissions Challenge. The team are developing a technology to capture CO2 from the atmosphere. So Trevor, to exemplify the scale of the problem, so this is the quantity of CO2 or greenhouse gases emitted in Ireland per day. So 160,000 tons. So 160,000 tons per day of greenhouse gases in Ireland. To think that all of that going into the atmosphere from just Ireland and then you, you, you bring in the UK and Europe and the world, like. Professor Wolfgang Schmidt is leading the project. The group is building a device and using an innovative mix of materials to capture CO2 from the atmosphere. The technology comprises of two main components, a porous material that captures the CO2 and a technological process. So you see here uh, the instrument that we developed, a prototype that captures kilogram of CO2. And so what we do is we, we fill our material into a column and we draw air into this column, so pass air over it. CO2 gets absorbed, captured by the material, and we generate CO2-free air at the output. Okay. At a certain point, at a certain time, the capture material is saturated with CO2, and we remove the CO2 in a certain way, like a vacuum cleaner, we pull it out, we obtain pure CO2, 98% purity and then we start the process again. So air gets drawn into the machine and CO2 is captured and then we have a regeneration cycle at which we regenerate the material. So it's a cyclic system, we draw air in, capture the CO2 and the process starts again. Is it difficult to, to pull carbon out of the air? It is a huge challenge to capture individual molecules, these molecules from diluted air into a porous material, into our system that captures CO2. So we need to develop materials that efficiently capture CO2. The energy demand has to be minimized, otherwise the technology does not scale and is not viable, it's not sustainable. Dr. Sebastian Vessen designed the prototypes and is now working on scaling the technology. We started to test material for CO2 so capture in small test tubes and we increase the size, uh, the, the amount of material uh, several times. And now we are using 400 grams of material and now the next step that we will do in this project is to build a, a big industrial size prototype that will hold like 100 kilos of material. 
The team is aiming to use renewable energy sources to provide heat and electricity to power the units. They're looking at areas with an abundance of waste heat and data centres, an industry that's on the rise in Ireland, could be the answer. So it is predicted that in 2027, 30% of the total energy demand in Ireland is used by data centres. However, more than 90% of this energy is expelled as waste heat. So if we can harness this waste heat, we can use this energy input to capture efficiently CO2. So if only 50% of this waste heat can be used for carbon impact, we have the capability to capture more than 1.6 million tons of CO2 per year with our technology. This could have applications globally. While the problem of climate change is much bigger than any one technology or solution, the team are feeling the heat and believe that their tech has the potential to make a real difference. We have to succeed. It's an urgency in this project. We have to, we believe that the technology is achievable and we have to succeed. Other technologies have to follow and have to be in parallel implemented in combination also with societal change. So I believe this technology is just part of a puzzle. The challenge is, is huge. It's never been more important that the general public understand scientific findings and also how science even reaches these conclusions, the kind of evidence-based system, how, how science comes to conclusions so that the public can have confidence in, in science and make informed decisions based on that. So, you know, right now, this would be a really good time to return to being societies that are driven and guided by the best available uh, scientific information so that the decisions that we make are decisions that are based in fact and decisions that will stand up. Thank you.